Okay, so welcome to the last part of this where we're going to set up some rendering. What I'm going to do here is just drop down a material node and I'll actually do that before this. I like to have my flag on this. And in this material node, we want to grab these pieces that we created and we want to assign materials to these, but we haven't got any materials, so we need to create those. So I'm just going to create, uh, how many pieces do we have? And then we also have the outer, so we need six. So let's get rid of one. So we have piece zero and I will just say piece one, piece two. Okay, so what we can do now is just uh, create ourselves a mat net and we can dive inside. And here I'm going to create a RS material builder and I use Redshift, it's a GPU render engine. Uh, I like it, it's super fast and I'm quite comfortable in it. So I'm gonna create a blue one. We'll create a whole bunch of different colors but I'm gonna just start with one and then we'll make some more. So we'll start with our standard material and what I want to add to this is, well actually let's apply this to our shape and I'm going to disable that just so we have no material but then I can add a material on the outside here. So let's just go into here and add our blue material and let's create ourselves a camera and for this I'm just going to make a square camera and we'll give it 85 okay so let's say something like that and then we need some lights so I'm going to use an RS dome light and this will kind of be my um, main light or my full light uh, and I have this OD asset library and I'm just going to grab one of my HDRIs here. I double click it and it applies it here. And last thing I want to do is just quickly create a backdrop. And so this will be my BG or background. And here I'm going to create a grid. I need this to be a lot bigger as you can see here. So we'll just go 15 by 50 and then just give this some more rows and columns. And what I want to do here is add a bend node. Uh, so I need to actually flip my camera around so that I'm facing this way. And then let's just increase the size of this. Okay, so now I have some sort of base here. And we can zoom in a little bit. Okay, we will have to adjust that in a second. And we need to create a material for this. So here I'm going to go here and just create a an RS material builder. And I'll apply this here. And this will be called my BG material. And for this one, I just want a kind of slight orange and I will set this to be 0.5 weight and 0.5 roughness and we are good to start rendering we have a light we have the background material and we have this blue material so if I open my redshift render view I can open this here but what I can also do is split left and right and this just lets me have it all on one screen which when I'm doing tutorials like this, it's easier for you to see everything. Otherwise, I'd normally have this monitor on my second screen so that it's easier to work. Okay, so that looks cool. Let's just increase the brightness of this HDRI just so we can start to see what we're looking at. And let's start playing with this material. So we want this to be blue. And maybe that's a little bit too dark. So something like that's nice. We obviously don't want it to be so shiny. We want this to be like a material cloth. So that's looking better. And something that makes this um, look a lot better is if we have some sort of bump map. And so what I can add here is a bump map and I can pipe this into the bump input. And then again, I can use my OD asset library. This is not free. This is a paid kind of tool, but you can use it. You don't have to. I find it's super useful um, to use. I can just drag in textures here drop that in there and if we take a look at this let's just refresh this to see there we go now it's working now this is a little bit too strong so let's just dial back these values and I can also just dial back that and maybe we need to make this just a little bit smaller by increasing the scale and then if we zoom in here you can start to see that it gives it this little bit of a kind of cloth feeling it gives it a little bit more of a nice texture and it's a bit hard to see so what we can do is jump back here and just duplicate this camera jump into it and then make this one a zoomed in camera 
just so we can kind of see the details. And now we can see this. One of the other things is that our lighting isn't uh, so strong, so it's a little bit dark, hard to see. So let's create an RS sun. You can use an area light or a sunlight. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes I play with both. So we can turn off this light and then turn on this light just to see what this one is doing. So that looks, that looks good. I want to increase the sun disk scale a lot so we get a very nice soft shadow. We can also increase the softness a lot. And then finally, let's just turn down this value and then let's bring this back in. And now this is a lot brighter. So this is without it and now this is with it. And that is looking really good. Okay, so what we can do now is um, we can add just a little bit of extra to this material. We can go down into this sheen and we can increase this sheen. And you can see it just kind of adds a little bit of, uh, you can see a little bit of whiteness to it. If we go really extreme, you can see it adds like this white and I don't need it to be so strong. Maybe something like that works. And especially with our slightly darker colors, this will make quite a big difference. So now we can just go ahead and duplicate this and change the colors. And I'll do that very quickly. All right, so now we've done that, we can just apply this. And this is labeled as outer, but it's actually the inner. So we'll use the inner and we will just apply randomly these different colors. And I'm missing one green one here. So let's just add some sort of green. I'm not sure I actually ended up using green. Um, the container is called green, but uh, we can just pick a different color that we think will work. Maybe a different shade of blue. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. And of course, this is looking a little bit dull. What we can also use is a little bit of this post effects. I don't always use this, but in preview cases like this, it's super useful. We just push up this curve and give it a little bit of contrast. Already that's looking nice. We can also use this LUT. And this is a lookup table. And if we pull that in, yeah, you can scroll through here and try different ones. Um, there's some really nice ones in here. And one like this with a real subtle value goes a long way. So if I disable that, you can see that that's much brighter. So this is without post effects and this is with. And what I will end up doing is adding this in post, but it, here it's nice just to visualize. So I can do a quick bucket render just to see what this looks like. And that's looking great. And obviously some of the values, um, maybe like our orange one, which is I think actually red. Yeah, we can give it a little bit more saturation just so that that is punchy and popping. And some of the other colors too, maybe like the purple maybe needs to be a little bit brighter. But of course that just comes down to personal preference and personal taste and balancing it in the scene. But overall, I think that is a good take on how I do my rendering. So let's just quickly talk about how we would actually render this. So if I jump into my out container, I have these redshift props and I can uh, go into this out context and you can choose EXRs or TIFF sequences or JPEGs, whatever you choose. EXRs will not have um, any of this color baked in, but then you can add it in post and you have a lot of color correction um, values. So here I'm gonna set a render range and I'm going to delete these values and I want it to be the values that I have here. So it will be frame 11 to frame 260. And then I can just render to disk and I will get this um, as I've set it here. So I really hope that you enjoyed that. I hope you could follow along. Obviously I had to kind of skip over some maybe key factors, I hope not, but I hope I explained everything in a way that was easy to follow. Of course, if you have any questions, you can hit me up, find me on Instagram, or on any other social media, on Discord, on Patreon, wherever you may uh, wanna find me, come look for me, you can ask me questions. But I had a lot of fun doing this. Thanks to NVIDIA for having me, and I will see you next time.